And we have solid clay, and so it's all kinds of fun. No matter where you're building fence, whoever digging the holes will have something to say about how the hole is dug. And they say, well, we've got clay, or you get down into Florida, they've got a lot of sand. Everyone has something to say about why their holes just aren't the best to dig in. This reaction video, sponsored by Nationwide Industries, but Nationwide Industries is more than just a sponsor. I legitimately enjoy doing business with them, both with the Cornerstone 2 hinges and the Trident latch that we use on our pool gates or on their full line of chain link hardware. They're great people to work with. I appreciate them a lot. If you're looking for a supplier, you should check them out too. All right, everybody, today's video is titled How to Set a Fence Post in Concrete by the House Barons Channel. After you get all the post holes dug, Check out how quickly that auger dug that hole out. Not a rock to be seen. Yeah, you know, here in Missouri, it seems like we grow rocks, chunk rock and shelf ledge rock. I don't know how that works, but every single hole seems to have a, either a handful of, uh, oh, grapefruit sized rocks or you just hit solid ledge. Not this guy though. All right, so the goal is we've got this string running from corner post to corner post. Now he's on the string line gang, it seems like. Uh, Dan Wheeler and them are very big proponents. We use string line as well. I don't want to say in them. It looks like he's running it directly on the post though. So we'll see how this plays out. And that's on the back side of this post. So all my other posts in, in each hole, the back of the post needs. So he's running the string line directly on the post. Uh, if you watch the channel at all, you know, I like to step this string line off six inches. The reason being, if you set your post and probably just bring it right up to the line. It tells you you're right in line. The problem is inexperienced setters or, or fence builders or, or the DIY crowd at home might actually end up pushing that string line out ever so slightly. So it won't be affected on post one, but if you have a line of eight to 10 posts, you could then see it pushing that string line out gradually more and more and more. When you set your last post, you realize it is well out of line. Uh, like I said, I'd like to see this string line set off about six inches. And then at every post, you can measure from the string line to the post. Make sure it's right at six inches. Post is directly in line exactly where it needs to be. But there's no worry of pushing that string line out of line. And we have solid clay, and so it's all kinds of fun. No matter where you're building fence, whoever digging the holes will have something to say about how the hole is dug. I mean, obviously here in Missouri, like I said, we've got rocks. Lots of people have rocks. I'm not saying we're unique in that. Uh, but then you go to somewhere that doesn't have rocks and they say, well, we've got clay or you get down into Florida, they've got a lot of sand. Everyone has something to say about why their holes just aren't the best to dig in. Now, I would choose clay over uh, solid rock any day i've already measured the gravel and put the gravel in the hole and to speed the process i just go ahead and fill this up a number of times till uh, i measured the first hole to figure out how much gravel four to six inches of gravel in the bottom okay so certainly one method would be to as he said fill the bottom of the hole up four to six inches with gravel uh, my assumption is he's thinking that will then drain the water trying to reduce rot in the post. The problem is he said, it sounds like he said he had really clay, uh, really clayey soil. Is that clayey? Is that a word? Heavy clay content in the soil. So it's not really going to drain. Clay soil types aren't known for draining water. They actually hold moisture. So I'm not, that might be defeating the purpose. Second point is most of the rot on post occurs in the first few inches of that topsoil, uh, the aerobic zone is where all the organisms live that like to feed on the natural fibers of the wood and lead to rot and decay. Bottom of the post, you know, it's probably a nice thought. It probably didn't add that much to the project, so maybe peace of mind it's worth it. Uh, and this project, it might be uh, it might be less than useful. Our holes are 30 or more inches deep. That's so that the, the frost heave doesn't pull the posts up when it gets really cold. So 30 inches is also an ASTM standard. So um, not only is this fence below his frost line, I'm not sure exactly where he's from, uh, but it also meets ASTM standards. You'd want to check the frost depth of your area to see how deep you're going to be. You want to be four to six inches below that frost line. Typically, a uh, Department of Agriculture will have a... Uh, 
a chart or a graphic on how deep the frost line is in your particular area. I also like that he's using a uh, really long level as opposed to a small torpedo level, which will give you a view of how plumb that post is in that particular area. But if that particular area you're measuring isn't true with the rest of the post, the post could be out of plumb and you not know it. So by using this longer level, he's ensuring that the majority of the post, the average of the post is plumb. So now what I wanna do, and you can look and see how I'm gonna just touch the post to the string. And with that just touching the string, then I'm gonna check for level. And so I'm checking for level. And if I'm pretty close, then, then I know that this hole is gonna work just great. So now I just lean, lean the post in there. I want to get my bag post mix. And this stuff is, it's fast setting. Dump it into the uh, hole. I like that he's using fast setting concrete. It's going to set up pretty quickly, depending on the temperature, very quickly. Uh, although he's wearing a sweatshirt, so it might be cool when he's setting this. It might take a little bit longer to cure. But the idea being it's fairly rigid in half an hour i uh, mean it'll hold it it'll hold that post exactly where you want it to be in half an hour ready to build in like four or five hours if he's setting this in the early morning he could conceivably start running stringers on it you know by lunch and add water so it does speed the process up some Concrete is... Uh, We're going to have the conversation about concrete, right? So there's part of the fencing industry that is on the wet set side of this discussion. Part of them is on the dry compaction, the dry pack method. Some are a mixture, dumping concrete, dumping water, alternating. Fast set actually doesn't need to be uh, set with water until the end uh, unless you've got really deep holes. So fast set's a little bit different of a beast. Uh, you can still pre-mix it and dump it in the hole. It just sets off faster. You'd really want someone to be holding that post plumb while you're pouring the concrete so that as you're pouring it, you'd pour it evenly around the post. In a lot of DIY scenarios, that's not an option. So this is certainly a good uh, representation of a one-person install. Even a little set of hands, even a kiddo, uh, could hold that post fairly close to plumb while you pour the concrete evenly around it. All right, so that's one bag. And now we're gonna check, we're gonna check the fit again as we go up, as we add bags. I like that he's using the plural bags. Uh, now those quick set bags are 50 pound bags. So you'd wanna use at least two per post. I'm gonna tilt the post this way. I'm gonna add concrete, the bag mix in the front part of this and then it's gonna form a barrier, and when I push the, the post back, it'll it'll push the bottom of the post to the other side of the hole, because there's gonna be concrete in front of it. And that's because I'm about a quarter inch off right now. If it were us and our guys, our field crews would probably dig out what he's calling the close side of that. If you're looking at this, the left side of the hole, there's not gonna be a lot of concrete in between the post and the ground, whereas on the other side, the right side, looks like there's a pretty big void there. The post is gonna be lopsided in the hole. If the concrete were to fail, it would fail on the left side. There's just not gonna be a lot of concrete there to support it. You would really ideally want a somewhat round hole, and you'd want the post set directly in the middle of that hole. That way it has consistent concrete all around it, um, less likely to fail. Now, okay, so now I just jiggle it and it's settling down in the front of here. And then as, a, as I bring this pole this direction, there's, con there's concrete, bag concrete mix there. So it's gonna kick the bottom of the post out. And that's what I'm looking to do. Okay, so I'm just touching the wire there. Now I'll check the level again. And that's true front to back, just touching the line, that's perfect. And now we go side to side. Like I said, you'd also wanna step back, probably one post back, and just make sure that the line you're using is still perfectly straight. He's been pushing that line around a lot when he's moving this post, which is okay as long as he comes back to not touching it and then just barely touches it. The problem is someone who doesn't install fences a lot isn't gonna be as familiar with that. And like I say, could push their entire fence line out of whack just by ever so slightly pushing that string line out of 
out of square. And that's level, and now we'll go ahead and add more mix around it. And we just keep adding mix and checking, adding mix and checking. I do like that he's taking his time with this though. He's not rushing the process. He's checking it several times. He's using plenty of attention to detail to make sure it gets exactly where it needs to be. And now we just let it sit and percolate, go down a little bit, and then we'll add some more to the top so that the top, the concrete is gonna be just higher than what is gonna be the surface of the ground so that water won't pool next to the post. See, that would be the benefit, one of the benefits of using steel post, a purpose-built post similar to a Postmaster or a lifetime post, is that you could leave the concrete below grade. There's not the concern of uh, rot or deterioration. Fill back over so that grass will grow right around the post. It, look a little bit nicer. When adding water to the post, we'd probably also take the opportunity to wash that post off, wash that concrete dust off the post. For what fences are costing um, nowadays, I'd want it to look a little bit nicer in the finished presentation, and it, it will be easier to clean it off now when it's just dust, rather than as it absorbs, absorbs moisture uh, and turns into concrete, it's gonna be a lot harder to make that post look nice and clean. All right, so now that's just a rinse and repeat. Just keep doing that and making sure that your post is just touching your your guideline there. And once it's all said and done, if your posts are level, you'll have a completely true straight looking fence and ready for wood. Looks like it went well. Guys, in the comments below, let me know what you think of the fence installation process and if you would have done anything differently. For now, I'm Joe Evers, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.